is a man who has been denied a heart transplant because he won't get vaccinated against COVID-19. Yeah. Now, me personally, I, I, I've, I've not made any secret of the fact that I am not vaccinated. I am a younger man, not under 40. I work, I, I exercise, I take my vitamin C, D, zinc. Uh, I wear my mask and social distance and I don't work around a bunch of people. So I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm generally not around a tons of people and, I'm, I, and, and I, I can essentially do a good job of social distancing. But this man here is at death's door He's been denied a spot on the heart transplant list because he has not been vaccinated against COVID-19. DJ Ferguson has been steadfast about refusing the shot on principle. His father told uh, WBZ in Boston. Now he was born with a hereditary heart issue that causes his lungs to fill with blood and fluid. So, you know, he's in a really bad state. And, and listen to this guy. Listen to him. This teacher says he's willing to die rather than get vaccinated. Shamgar Connors has stage five kidney disease. He's on dialysis for 12 hours a day. <laughs> the University of Virginia hospital system is telling him no vaccine, no transplant. He recorded a conversation with his doctor. I'd rather die. Kidney failure and get the vaccine. I just wanted to make it very clear that yeah, I ultimately, if that's what the that, that's the hard choice that has to be made, I'm never getting this vaccine ever. I don't care what they say, what anyone says, I'm not doing it. Even if it means you could die. I'm fighting this battle not just for myself, but for everyone, even the people that disagree with me, because what they don't understand is that today it's me. Tomorrow it's you. Hospitals across America are insisting that transplant patients get vaccinated before surgery, and they mean business. Desperate patients are being taken off transplant lists if they refuse. The reason? Vaccinated transplant patients have a better chance at survival, and they should get priority. The 42-year-old middle school teacher from Virginia has two children. His wife, Lauren, is actually a nurse Ugh. and also an anti-vaxxer. Yeah. Can I have a yeah. hug? The consequences can be tragic. Michelle Batulo was scheduled for a life-saving liver transplant at the Cleveland Clinic. Her daughter, Angela, was willing to donate her liver. But the surgery was canceled when both of them refused to be vaccinated. Now she is dead. Has it occurred to either one of you that you might be wrong and may have cost your loved one her life? No. Absolutely not. Give me a kiss. Now, what you see, you just heard two people who have life-threatening illnesses yeah. that are non-COVID issues, but would rather die than take a vaccine so that they can get the surgery that will save their lives. Mm -hmm. So now looking at this story, Rev, I, I, from my perspective, like I said, I, I'm definitely not somebody who's pro forcing the vaccine on people. I don't support vaccine mandates. I understand them with in the medical profession. Uh, I could understand why doctors and nurses uh, would, would have to get it, not even because I, I, it stops the spread. Obviously, it does not stop the spread. Ask the Chicago Bulls, who all tested positive after being double and triple vaxxed, the, the entire team practically. Okay, so it doesn't stop the spread, but if you have some sort of uh, comorbidity, something that can take you out, you it is probably in your best interest to just take the vaccine. Okay, you're not like pericarditis or myocarditis is probably not your biggest issue. For a younger man like myself, it probably that would be my bigger issue. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's relatively healthy. Mm -hmm. This guy has a congenital heart of heart hereditary heart issue that caused his lungs to fill with blood and fluid okay the vaccine was made specifically for this guy mm. but because people for and against the vaccine have so politicized this thing and have so been deceptive for and against the vaccine now he's become it's principle. It's a matter of principle yes. for him now. Now it's a matter of principle. He just wants to own the libs.
He just wants to own the lives and he's going to die and leave behind young children and his wife, who is a nurse, to own the lives. And this is why I've always been so adamant on this show, folks, about holding people like Dr. Fauci accountable, holding the corporate media accountable for lying about the effects of the vaccine and, and downplaying it. When you don't have incredibility, which Dr. Fauci now has none, and the corporate media has none, and obviously the drug companies don't have any, what you do is you basically allow for charlatans, for uh, grifters, for people who have an agenda to make up their own truth. And, the, and since you're lying, since you're not telling the truth, then we might as well lie in the opposite direction. Now, if we had a functional society where we could trust our media, where we could trust the drug, our, the, the drug companies that make our medicines, where we could trust our public health officials like Dr. Fauci and Rochelle Walensky, then you wouldn't have this type of, of uh, you wouldn't have the type of backlash that you have where it, people like this guy, who I think it seems to be an idiot, an out and out moron, now he has, he's ready to die on principle. For what? For what? What what is he doing? Like, what what is the point? Like, what are you trying to prove? Yes, I know the that once again the drug companies are trying to force the vaccine on people. I talk about it every week. I know that the corporate media is trying to force it on people because they are owned by Pfizer and the corporate uh, drug companies. I talk about it on here every week. I know the that Joe Biden, who's also owned by Pfizer, Joe Biden's taking more money from big pharma and health insurance company than any politician in history. So I know that this guy, I understand why this guy does not want to give in to those forces. I get it. I understand it. Okay. But you are the special case of person with a comorbidity in your early 30s. You may be a young man, but you are not a healthy man. Who needs this? So, Reb, when you saw this story, what did you think? Well, I said, under ordinary circumstances, I say here's a lawsuit waiting to happen. But then we live in we live in such politicized times that you know you might have trouble finding a, an appeals court or a, 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 a civil court that will take the case, right? Because they'd be so scared that they'd be sending a message. You know, it's just like another story on the same general topic. Remember when they told us that the Omicron variant was less uh less virulent than delta oh yeah yeah less likely to make you really sick right yeah well now they're sending out stories that that uh the omicron variant is is causing more people to die well i, I, I... <laughs> now i i remember seeing british scientists uh, uh south african scientists yeah other European scientists, all everybody was on the same page that this variant is less virulent than, in fact, the more word, transmissible but more, less dangerous. Exactly, that right. was the message they were putting out. Right, and I knew it. I knew if we give them enough time, they were going to find some way, because that was a message they did not want to get out. Oh yeah, absolutely. That I, that that's messing with the message now. Right, we supposed to be thinking COVID is a death sentence. Yeah. COVID will kill you. You're guaranteed to die if you get COVID high. Yep. So so now it's finally happened. Well, because so many people are getting sick, then they're dying. From what? Right. Are they dying of or with COVID? <laughs> and again, like Dr. Fauci himself talked about there being a difference between dying of COVID and dying with COVID. Uh he finally admitted this recently, fairly recently, uh, on MSNBC. And I want to ask uh, specifically about hospitalization. One of the recent concerns, I'm sure you're getting asked a lot about this. How do you explain the sudden increase in hospitalizations among children? I mean, if Omicron is less severe and 15 to 20 percent less likely yeah. to send someone to the hospital, how, why are we seeing this sudden increase in children at hospital with COVID? Well, that's a good question, and there are two things that contribute to that. First of all, quantitatively, you're having so many more people, including children, 
who are getting infected. And even though hospitalization among children is much, much lower on a percentage basis than hospitalizations for adults, particularly elderly individuals. However, when you have such a large volume of infections among children, even with a low level of rate of infection, you're gonna still see a lot more children who get hospitalized. But the other important thing is that if you look at the children who are hospitalized, many of them are hospitalized with COVID as opposed to because of COVID. And what we mean by that, if a child goes in the hospital, they automatically get tested for COVID and they get counted as a COVID hospitalized individual. When in fact, they may go in for a broken leg or appendicitis or something like that. So it's overcounting the number of children who are quote hospitalized with COVID. So th that's what we were saying for, and that's what a lot of people were saying. A lot of people were being hospitalized with COVID, not from COVID. And now Dr. Fauci has had to admit that even, especially with a lot of these children, they're overcounting the amount of people who are being hospitalized from COVID because a lot of the people are just being hospitalized with COVID. Now, again, again, I, I, I'm no fan of Dr. Fauci. I'm no fan of Pfizer. I'm no fan of Moderna. Okay. But in this specific person's case, OK. In, in this specific case, the hospital and, and, I, and I actually looked at this, this is consistent with what their policy has always been. Their policy is that they have to give the heart to the person, to people who they know have the best chance whatsoever to survive because they're going to they're going to make this man extremely immune compromised when they give him that transplant. So they're going to have to essentially destroy his immune system so that his body does not reject the heart, okay? And mm. so in that, he will need to get, he will need to have multiple vaccines, not just the COVID vaccine. Mm -hmm. He will need to take all the vaccines that will require him to have the best chance of survival when his heart, you know, when they, when they give him that heart transplant. This is essentially a self-owned for this guy. He is so intent on, on owning the libs and he is so tuned turned off by people like dr fauci who's flip-flopped throughout the pandemic and the mainstream media who flip-flopped and who lied and 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 distorted facts and figures about everything that he's willing to go to his death for what what is his what is his purpose i i don't get this and that woman who her and her daughter rejected the vaccine and she ended up dying her daughter was going to give her her kidney and now she couldn't get it and she ended up dying. Wow. So like, like I said, this again, there, there was never a one size fits all for the vaccine. There's those of us who are younger and healthy. Most of us face a very small minuscule risk of being hospitalized from COVID-19. That's what the numbers say. You look at the numbers, one in 112 unvaccinated people are hospitalized. That's all of us. That's old people, young people, children, everybody put together. Okay. For somebody in my age range or younger, it's probably even lower than that. Okay. Okay. But, and for people who are, are, are vaccinated, it's one in 10,000. So if you're good, like I said, if you're vaccinated, if you're vaccinated, if you're worried about having your, your, uh, your issues, your, your, your heart issues, your asthma, your cancer, your diabetes, then absolutely do what you got to do brother do you what you got to do to get the here, surgery but here's the thing they could also just as easily test him see if he's positive if he's not positive and i presume they've tested the uh the uh the transplant organ see if it's contaminated and if he's not sick and they put the organ in and then just test him weekly because now we do have medicine that treats COVID and their primary concern is whether he would reject the transplant. Yeah. COVID does not affect whether you will reject the transplant. But it does affect whether you will die if you just got a transplant. If it makes you more weak. It makes you weaker and more vulnerable. Okay. But there again, they they we've got medicine to treat it now. So he gets the transplant. They test him regularly to see if he's positive. And if he tests positive, then you start treating him. 
just like if he got a transplant and then he started rejecting it, you'd start treating it. It's no difference. But if the, if there's other people who could get that heart who are more likely to survive, you got to go with the person who's most likely to survive. But that presumes that he's, quote unquote, more likely to even get sick. Well, he consider, yeah, they consider they're going to destroy his immune system. That with that, that they, they have to essentially affect his immune system to get him the heart. So he's going to be more susceptible, not only to COVID, but to everything. Well, then in that case, do you want to give him? Yeah, do you want to? So by that argument, nobody should get a transplant until they get COVID-19 under control. Because if they destroy your immune system, yeah. they're even destroying your immune system with the vaccine. The whole thing that the vaccine allegedly is designed to do, which is create an immune system for you, they're destroying through the transplant. Right, but we got a caller, but they're essentially playing the percentages. 